Hi, boys and girls. Mrs. Tento here. Remember, we were working on a froggy made like this. Oh, that doesn't look so good yet. But I'm going to add the black part of the eyes right now. I'm doing the same thing we've done before. Take a rectangle, fold it in half till it looks almost a square shape. Then I'll hold a corner and I'm going to start curving, curve cutting. So you go to the edge, go to the next corner, curve it off, cut it off, then go round and round. You might have something else to make circles with. You might want to trace your circles. Wow, this one turned out like a, a too big. So it's a little too big. I'm going to cut it down some. And when that happens, you just cut a smile away. And let's see if this one will work. All right, there's, let's see if they'll work on the eye part. If I made it too big, I'll, oh, no, that looks good. That looks perfect. Wow. That's what we want is the eyeballs to go right on top of the whites. There's the eyes. I'm going to glue that down. Okay, Mr. Frog. Let's see if we can get you glued on. I'll glue the back of the black part and put that inside. And I'll glue the other black part and I'll put that on top. Whoops. These want to fly away. And there I have two eyes. Now it still needs some more. I think we need to put on some legs. And I want them to be a little longer so I can fan fold them. So I need to make four and I want them to be the same size maybe. So I'm gonna fold a skinny strip about an inch wide and I'll fold another one. So I'll just fold it down and I'll fold it back. So that's all the same width and I'll do another fold so that when I open it up, I know where to cut without having to use a ruler or anything like that. And the first cut I'm going to make is to take off this extra piece of paper. So I'm cutting that off. And if at any time you need to pause the video, pause it so you can just get that one part done um, each part at a time. Then I'm gonna take this part, one, two, three, four, five legs. I think we only need four. So just keep one in case you need it for another frog. I'm gonna cut down on the fold. That's my line to cut on. And I'm cutting that off. And here it comes. There's one leg, not perfect. Maybe the other one will be better. And I'm going to cut right down that fold so I don't have to worry about drawing any lines on it. One. And let's see if I can get two done. Two. And well, that's a little woggly, but I guess my frog is going to be a little froggly woggly. Um, and I'm going to cut that. I guess this one is the worst one. So I'm going to toss the one I don't like the most. I'm just going to get rid of that one. And then you remember from when we did spiders and we did other projects where we fan folded back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then there you've got your springy frog legs. And so then you attach frog legs down out the side near the mouth just kind of out sideways can go it's not really the mouth you don't want it to cover that fold though so maybe just at an angle going down maybe we want to go down this way I think that might be better and I'll glue one on and I have to make the next one gosh we have a lot of things to do on this too so I'm gonna take the next one I'm gonna fold back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and push real hard and crease on the creases and there I've got my froggy leg and I'm going to glue it on the back and then I have two to put out the off the top sides so there's two you want a frog with all four legs because how will they use have the, any kickers to kick off of a they use their really strong back legs to jump from place to place so we have to make sure that we have those there's another one and uh, another one. one of the fun things about spring and when I was a little girl my sister and I we would go riding on our bikes with our friends when we lived in the mountains of Pennsylvania 
And we would go to a place called Uncle Joe's Frog Pods, and we would collect frogs' eggs. And my mom, she didn't like it. So we had to take our jars and put those frogs' eggs back in the, we took them to the swamp across the street from us. And who would have thought a mountainside would have a swamp on it? It wasn't a hot swamp. It was just where water ran off, and there were some froggies there. So we protected them. Now I'm going to put it behind in the back, close to where the eyes are glued on. See that? So then doesn't it look like it has arms, front arms and hind legs? All right, and I'm going to glue the other one just the same way. And I'll show you from back, the back side where I'm gluing it. Like that and like that. And that's a pretty good sized frog. What's missing? The tongue. So let's cut a strip. Here's my paper again. I'm going to just cut another strip out. And this time I'm going to make a longer, a little bit wider tongue. I'm going to use the part that I've already cut. I'm going to cut about a half an inch. I'm going to make it a long, 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 long one. And since we did all these ruffle puffle legs I think I want to have a, a fan folded tongue too and you can do this and you can make more than one kind of frog or you can make a frog the way you know how to make a frog and you can decide do you want it sitting on a log or on a on a um, a rock in your picture or where you want to put that and I've fan folded the tongue Somebody did that on another animal of ours. It was our snakes when we made those anacondas, I think. And somebody did that and it looked really good. So I thought it's kind of fun to do different types of tongues. So there's another fan fold. We'll just call this our fan fold frog, won't we? And there, now my froggy has a tongue. And he just needs to find a fly or a, an insect to eat. There, how do you like that? You can. So now we have this kind of frog that is a kind of a full fan fold frog. And then we have kind of our triangle, circle, and oval frog. Two kinds of frogs to make for your pond. Um, and I think I'm going to take some time on this to show you how to make polywogs and some frog's eggs. So let me see if I can find where I put that white paper. Remember, I ran out of white paper and I didn't bring any home with me now that we're learning out of our houses. I'm going to just take that and cut along the seam. And I want to make some frog's eggs. But you know, they frog's eggs are not like toad's eggs. Toad's eggs are more look like a bunch of yarn bundled up with little uh, black dots. Frog's eggs look more like this. They look more like little lumpy, bumpy clouds. And you just make a cloud-like looking piece of white paper. And usually these are attached to a branch of a log or a vine. Not a vine, it would be more toward a reed. And I'm going to just take my little black magic marker and I'm going to make some little black dots on these to make it look like we've got some frog's eggs. And I might circle a few of them so they look a little separate from each other. But I'll put all the, the circles in. You could cut circles out if you want or if you have a paper puncher. You could punch out little circles that you glue on because that would make them probably prettier than what I'm doing. But I'm not too worried, just so you know that the ponds in the springtime have quite a bit of frog's eggs. Now, my parents lived in a place where the people behind them had a, there, that just, you can circle these little um, eggs so that they look more distinctly of uh, their own self. But behind my parents, they had a hot tub, and I guess they didn't put the lid on it. And every spring, there would be loads of chirpings and, uh, I don't know, croaking sounds, very loud croaking sounds at nighttime. And wow, was it loud. And you kind of had to pretend that it was something else that would put you to sleep. There, I'm getting more frog's eggs, and they go in the pond as well. So that's that. Let's make a polywog. And then we'll go on to another uh, video on how to make the ducks. So let's see what I have here for polywogs. I'm going to want to have some paper that's a rectangle shape. 
And remember what I said about here's some more. I can cut it. I can do two at once. Remember I said they look kind of like pickles with a little head. And they have little um, fins coming out of them. So I'm just going to make the little pickly head shape and the body shape that's kind of long. And it's they don't have a tail and they don't have legs when they're just the little tadpoles. They look like a different sort of fish. And let's see, I just, I didn't draw it, but you might want to draw yours on. And there's, you can put a little eyeball on or draw a little eyeball to make your little polywog. Let me just put a little eyeball on my polywog. It's such a cute little baby. Another one. And these go into the pond. They can swim around and you can make them even smaller than this. They don't have to be this big. You probably won't even put a froglet in there because that's a lot of work. Unless you have a lot of time and you want to do that, this is your pond, kindergartners. You can put in it all the things that go in a pond your way. They don't have to be Mrs. Tento's way. I'm just giving you ideas uh, on what I would do if I had the time, which I'm taking the time, so that you have an idea I do kind of like that big frog. He's a little bit big. You might want to make a smaller one. He's big for that little pond. It'd be a big frog in a small pond. Better to be a big frog in a big pond. All right, so you might want to make yours a little smaller than that. You could even make your, your uh, circle as big as, say, this. Well, that's not a good circle. It's got a chunk out of it. Well, well, well. Um, Here's a, oh, here's another way, but I got the head cut off a bit. I made like a shape of a snowman with just two um, circles. And you could put even frog legs out of this, put frog eyes up here, and frog leg down here, down here, over here, over here, put a little happy face on, and that would make a great frog. Maybe I'll make one of those when I'm off of the video. All right, now, what else? We made tadpoles. We made frogs, we made frogs' eggs. That's good for now. And now I would like to go to a different video and make, well, I can make a duck now. Let's see if we can make a little duckling. All right, I'm gonna start with a circle. A circle, circle. Everybody have a circle. And then I would take a square, and I've already cut mine and gotten it ready. So I'm gonna show you what I did to make the little wings. I took a square out of the golden color just to make it a little change. There's like a little square and cut it on the diagonal like that to get two triangles. Then I folded my triangles in half and then I put it, I'm going to glue my wings so the tips go up. See how nice? You could have them even go up further like that, up high, get the little wings up. And, um, I'll glue that on. Then I'm gonna get make a little head. And you know, they're babies, so you won't probably don't see ducks, ducklings' heads to uh, necks that defined at this age out in the pond. Uh, so we're just gonna make another little circle for their little head. And then I'll make a mommy duck for you. But these are, this is just a little duckling. Okay, let's see if I can get, I wanna have their wings matching. And from the front, it looks like a little airplane taking off. Okay, now I'm going to make the little head. And I'm going to take another circle of mine that's not a great circle. So I'm going to make it smaller. Um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to go up like this. I'm going to cut it down, around, 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 around around and I'm done and there's a little head and it's kind of golden now I could put it if I want a three-dimensional one this is what I would do I would make a slit like that toward the, the wings and I would make another little slit or not I don't know I haven't tried this yet so make another little slit like that well it kind of gets in the way of its little beak but you could leave it like that. It could be a, a little sweet, chunky little duckling. 
And then we could put the beak well, well, well. I don't know, if you wanna put it in your pond, you're gonna first wanna fold this a little bit so it can float on top of your pond, just like that. And I'll put a little, the little head back on. Maybe I won't put it all the way, maybe I'll just, maybe it'd be better just to cut the head a little bit, a little slit down the middle of the head. That's the better way. Just a little bit, not all the way, just like an, an hour hand's worth. You know what an hour hand's worth is. And oh, we need it to go in straight. We might have a little struggle with this till I get the beak on. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of orange paper, about that big, about two inches by a half an inch. I'm gonna fold it in half. And actually, I'm gonna make this beak not so square because duck bills do not look square. They have a rounded end to them. And there we go. I better stop there and start on another video. All right, we'll finish our duckling. Here's how far we've gotten on our duckling. We'll finish it in a minute. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.